All right, this is lesson 5.3, and this is really a lesson specific to a type of question you'll see on the AP exam. Um, you'll see a common type of free response question where they give you the graph of a first derivative. And then they ask you to make conclusions about the original function, okay? But the key thing is with justification, okay? So it's kind of like a continuation of our two previous lessons about the graphing, antiderivatives, derivatives, that kind of stuff, okay? When you do the justification, it's really important that you reference the given graph by name. So you're talking about the second derivative graph, or the first derivative graph, or the original f function graph, okay? And yes, you will probably be required to write a short sentence. Yeah, using English and math, how weird. Um, it is unnecessary and unwise to write more than one sentence in a justification, probably because then the readers will be like, what are you doing? Do you know what you're talking about? Okay. Um, and if you actually justify correctly, but you continue to ramble on and writing false statements, then the point you could have earned would actually be lost, because then the reader's thinking, you don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes it is helpful to draw first or second derivative number lines, like what we did in the previous lesson. Now, these number lines do not count as justification, be aware of that, but they can help you answer the question. So let me go through one example with you now, okay? Here is a graph, and notice this is the graph of the f prime, or the derivative of the function f of x. See, f prime. So this graph of f prime has horizontal tangents at plus or minus 2. So horizontal tangents here. They're telling that to you. And the domain is all real numbers. So actually the graph goes forever and ever both this way and that way. Okay? All right. So understanding this as the derivative graph, I'd like us now to answer these questions. So example number one says, on what open interval is f increasing oh when i'm talking about increasing what does that mean increasing means yeah where the derivative is positive now remember how i said drawing number lines might help so let me ask you to translate this graph into a first derivative number line if that is the case where is it equal to zero i hope you see that it occurs at four zero and also negative four can you tell me about the signs in each of these regions now? Yes, hopefully you can see that before negative 4. That's over here. The graph is below the x-axis, so the derivative is negative. Here the graph is positive. Then back to negative, and then back to positive. So once again, knowing this number line, I think, helps you answer question 1 quite easily. On what interval is f increasing? It's the intervals where? It's positive, so between negative 4 and 0. And we're going to use interval notation now. And 4, comma, infinity. Why? What's my reason? Because the first derivative graph, notice I say f prime, or f prime of x, is, yeah, positive. Okay. All right. You know, if you really want to be more specific, you can say this, uh, negative 4 comma 0 and 4 comma infinity is where the original function f is increasing because f prime is positive. Now, do you need this necessarily? Not necessarily, but if you want to be more complete, you can do that too. Okay. So on what interval is f decreasing? Well... Notice in this case, it didn't tell you open or close. I mean, we had that little like issue, right? So if you wrote it like this, negative infinity to negative 4, and also from 0 to 4, okay, is where f is decreasing because, and here's your justification, right? Because f prime is negative, that would be fine, okay? However, if you actually want to actually change it, remember, I didn't say open intervals, I could include those points, you could do it like this as well, whoops, 
what did I just do there? Whoops. 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 All right. Changing them to closed control points. That also works. And then if that's the case, then I would change my justification here instead of negative. I'd say less than or equal to zero. Okay. Either or. That's okay. Now, what x values does f has a relative maximum? Now, how do you know if we have a maximum? That's, of course, when we go from positive slope to negative slope. So where do we go from positive slope to negative slope? Positive slope. No, remember, don't say right here. Eh, remember, this is the slope graph. This would be the correct answer. Ding, ding, ding. If this was not f prime but f of x, this time it's f prime, so really you're looking at the number line, where does it go from positive to negative? That's right, at zero. At x equal to zero, f has a relative maximum because, and this is your justification now, f prime, the slope, changes from positive to negative at that point. Okay? And then what values does it have a local minimum? So I'm going to look at my number line here, minimum, going from negative to positive slope. So I see it occurs at two places now, at negative 4 and also positive 4. So at x equals to negative 4 and x equals to positive 4, f has a local min because f prime changes from negative to positive. Once again, you need to write out the words just by saying, hey, look at that uh, number line here. That's not a good justification. All right. And we got a few more. Oh, we're talking about concavity now. Oh, so when we talk about concavity, what do I need now? Yes, the second derivative or the second derivative number line. So let me go back up to my graph now and let's see if we can create a second derivative number line. I'm going to use the color black this time. How do I create a second derivative number line? Ah, this is where I'm looking at the slopes and notice they gave us slopes of zero at 2 and negative 2. Great. And then now, looking at the second derivative, can you see what happens here? All these slopes are what? Mm hmm Increasing or positive, so then I'm going to put a plus sign here. Notice the slopes between negative 2 and 2. They are all mm -hmm, negative down there. And then finally, above positive over there. So using this now as my piece of key information, let's see if we can answer number five. On what intervals is it concaving down? Concaving down, of course, is when the second derivative is negative. So how about the open interval from negative two to two? Because, well, okay, I'll be more specific, is where the original function f is concaving down because that's right, f prime is decreasing. So notice the slope of the derivative, which is the second derivative, is decreasing. All right. f prime is decreasing, the slope of the first derivative, right? Which, of course, equals to the second derivative. Okay. And then it says, at what x values for number 6 does it have a point of inflection? Remember, the point of inflection is where the second derivative changes concavity, or where the derivative now changes from it being increasing to decreasing. And those occur at, yes, positive and negative 2. And I'll say something like this, because the prime changes. Between increasing and decreasing. Okay. 
or you can say something like this too, or because f prime actually has a local extrema there. Okay. Or you can also say something like this, where the second derivative, right, changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay? And then finally, number seven, see if you answer that one, probably the trickiest of them all. On what intervals if, is f both decreasing and concaving upward? Ah, decreasing and concaving upwards. Concaving upwards, of course, is when it's positive. Decreasing when it is... Mm -hmm when the first derivative is negative, so where would that be? Positive and hmm, negative. <gasps> I think I'm looking negative, positive right here. This region works for number seven. And, ooh, yeah, right here. Negative and positive. Right, those two regions. So you see how smart where I graph the second derivative right below the first derivative? Haha, <laughs> there's a reason to my madness. And so finally, you can say something like this. Or what intervals from negative infinity to negative 4? And also from 2 to 4. Because what you can find is that f prime is negative. And increasing in that interval. Okay. All right. So I think this gives you a taste of what they're expecting. And now once again, like always, you need to practice.